Once again, this is going to suck. I have to make another stupid video about the damn movement drama, um, which I try to avoid, and I only do it when I feel obligated to. Um, I don't do this for fun. For example, when Graham Smith got targeted by the Kokesh campaign, he was targeted with uh, basically hiring a, an e-terrorist, for lack of a better term, to ruin his life for having the gall to have uh, criticized Adam Kokesh and his campaign publicly. Well, now I have to make another video because I have personal information that most people don't have um, regarding the video that Adam Kokesh just now made. Uh, I don't know if it was yesterday. I think that's when I saw it. Uh, complaining about Anarchapulco and... and and saying there were lies and fraud and this and that and the other thing. So, his video is sort of short. I'm going to put a link to that too. Um, a link to the video I made before. Um, and then a, a link to the video he just made about Anarchapulco. So you can see it. So you can see what I'm talking about. Um, now, he... The, the main thing he complains about is he says... Uh, I'm going to try to run through this fast and not waste everybody's time. The main thing he complains about is he says Anarchapulco owes him $1,000 from last year and he's trying to spin that as fraud and they're not paying up and blah, 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 blah. Um, and then he has a bunch of other random com complaints that are mostly like secondhand rumors or gossip or just complaints about, well, the management changed and we don't like how they're doing things or... or how much they're getting paid or they're not paying everybody's expenses for the sp expenses for all the speakers and they're and he was like saying they're listing speakers who might not have accepted the invitation yet he doesn't mention any names he doesn't give any evidence he doesn't substantiate any of this he just sort of sprinkles a whole bunch of random secondhand gossip or complaints now if you have complaints about the way Anarchapulco does things, whether it's before or this year or anything, fine. You know, I, th my video isn't about that. I don't care about that. I don't know about that. I'm not bothering to weigh in. Um, I will say this about the, the thing of, of Adam focusing on, like, they owe me a $1,000 and they're not paying up and they're liars and fraud and yada, yada, yada. Um, apparently, this was about uh, Adam asking to be reimbursed for his travel expenses for last year. And uh, Jeff Berwick told me, quote, he only mentioned, he being Adam, he only mentioned he didn't receive some of his travel payment in October, this is two months ago, and we told him we are overhauling accounting and as soon as it's done, we'll get back to him. Um, so portraying that as like fraud and this and that and the other thing, when he only brought it up two months ago and it's like apparently to, to you know, pay him back for expenses, for travel expenses or whatever. So like that's, not fraud. It can be a mix-up. It can be, you know, whatever, but okay, but mostly he's he's sprinkling out all these random complaints. Now, my video isn't even about that. I don't care. You can complain. You can have opinions about whatever they're doing and, you know, what they're doing wrong, what you wish they were doing, and, you know, I may have a few of my own that are sort of who cares. It's preferences. It's not my it's not my event, so I don't get to control everything. That's what <laughs> private property is all about. The reason I feel obligated to make this video is about two points, not the random complaints. One, that Adam implied in his video that he wasn't invited back to Anarchapulco this year because he asked about the money that he says they owe him. That is not at all true, and he knows that is not at all true. Two, his video at least implies that he's thinking of disassociating from uh, Anarchapulco and boycotting them based on these rumors and these complaints and, and these lies and fraud with, with labeled that he just sort of sticks on nothing. Um, and that's not true either. Um, for those who don't know, there is one reason that Adam Kokesh is not going to be speaking at the upcoming Anarchapulco, and it's me. And I take full credit, blame, whatever you want to call it, for that. Because when his campaign threatened Graham Smith and went after him, and again, I made the video of it. If you haven't seen it, you can see it below because I'll stick the link there. Um, as a matter of principle, I was saying, I can't be associated with this. This is not voluntarism. This is Stalin-esque terroristic lunacy. And by the way, I need to point out again that in those uh, screenshots where Ben Farmer, his, uh, who was Adam's campaign manager, He's talking to this person who he's trying to hire to destroy Graham's life. He also says, do you want a bigger target? So far, everybody I've talked to, their best guess of who the bigger target was, was me. Because the whole topic was, 
there are some people on Steam it disagreeing with our political campaign and as a result we're getting fewer donations can you please go destroy their lives for us and so the best guess if you want to look on steam it and who was critical of kokesh's presidential campaign and wonder who might be costing them some donations the bigger target was probably me so and everybody i've talked to said yeah i can't think of a <laughs> can't think of a better candidate for them to have gone after yet with their little terrorist routine than me. So yeah, I don't really want to be speaking at an event next to somebody extolling the virtues of non-aggression while behind the scenes thinking of terrorizing me and trying to ruin my frickin' life because I was publicly uh, in disagreement over his campaign. So yeah, I'm not playing that crap. I put Anarchapulco in a position that I didn't want to put them in, but as a matter of principle I had to say I'm not gonna I'm not going to speak alongside that, that phony, fraudulent politician crook. And you don't have to invite me. You can invite him instead. This is called freedom of association, which includes freedom of disassociation. I am disassociating with Adam Kokesh. And if you want to invite him instead of me, if it's your event, that's your choice. That's fine. I didn't like putting Anarchapulco in that position, but I felt morally obligated to, um, given that, that his campaign was trying to terrorize Graham, and probably trying to terrorize me, from all indications. So, in response to my video, this is October 22nd. Um, these, as far as I know, these emails have not been made public till right now. Jeff Berwick sends to Adam the following email. Hi Adam, a serious situation has, has come to light in the past few weeks. I'm sure you've seen this video, and he puts a link to my video about what the Kokesh campaign did to... Graham Smith, or tried to do to him. Jeff continues, I've been, I had been waiting for a public response from you, but haven't seen it. Do you have a response? Larkin is stating he will not attend Anarchapulco if you are speaking, so we are put in the situation of trying to figure out what we have to do. Totally my doing. They, you know, they're stuck in a position where they're like, I, well, we don't know what to do about this. Jeff is, at this point, being totally nice to him and bending over backwards and saying, oh, well, here's the situation. Jeff continues, as of right now, it appears most of the libertarian community who has seen this information is siding with Larkin, so we need to see you publicly respond and receive re support for your response before we can make any decisions. Let me know best, Jeff. Not only was that more than fair to Adam, it was more fair than I wanted him to be. Now, I totally wanted him to like, okay, wait and hear the other side. And, but this was after there had been no response and there was demonize the victim routine and block anyone bringing it up and all sorts of slimy stuff coming from the Kokesh campaign. So I was like, well, all right, fine. You know, give him time, whatever. This was Adam's response by email to Jeff. He's, this is October 23rd, the day after Jeff sent that. Jeff, I have answered all serious direct questions that I have received about this, both publicly and privately, and welcome yours. Hmm, that doesn't exactly match what I've seen at least a dozen people say, but okay. I have an interview planned with Derek Bros about it for when the rest of the evidence comes out. This was two months ago. I haven't seen that interview. Don't know if it happened. Couldn't find it. Just did a search and couldn't find it. So, but he says he's going to do an interview. Okay. Adam continues, quote, anything that Ben may have done to violate or attempt to violate the NAP was done without my knowledge, consent, or support. Okay. Cut and paste politician response. My campaign released a direct statement on Steemit here, and it will be on our campaign site soon, but we are making a blog first. All right. Here is their press release. I posted this as a comment before. It didn't make it to my first video because I hadn't seen it yet. This is their official response to Graham showing the screen captures of Ben Farmer trying to hire someone to destroy his life. Quote, not only does the Adam Kokesh American Referendum Project stand with the non-aggression principle, it is the core of our philosophy. We abhor aggression and coercion. This is a standard that each campaign member ethically agrees on and is expected to adhere to. We as a campaign do not condone any aggressive action by anyone. Should a team member violate the non-aggression principle in any way, it would be a breach of contract. In the event that conclusive evidence was provided, appropriate action would be taken. The end. Marcus Pulis, his press secretary. 
Did you notice that their press release didn't say anything about the actual allegations? Pure politician bullshit start to finish. Empty fluff. We believe in good things. We're going to say lots of words and hoping that, hoping that by the end of it, you'll forget what this was about. Okay, so that was their press release. So now back to Adam's uh, email to Jeff. The accuser in this case says that he is withholding information. He means Graham Smith. What Graham Smith sa said is, I'm still in contact with the person you tried to hire to ruin my life and I have more evidence. Like, he's withholding information. No, it means he has more damning information. Um, then Adam says this, quote, Ben, meaning Ben Farmer, Ben also has the rest of the conversation which will exonerate him. Time out. Adam just admitted that the conversation happened, that it was genuine. The conversation that he was referring to publicly as lies and hysteria. He knew it friggin' happened. Here it is, here he is admitting it happened and admitting that he friggin' knew it. While in public, he isn't admitting this. And he's talking like, oh, I don't know. I have nothing to do with that. I don't know anything about that. He freaking knew. Now, as for the rest of the conversation will exonerate him, bullshit. Patrick Smith, in the video he did about it, which was very, like, methodical and scientific and, and objective and <laughs> politer than mine by a long shot, he took the video because the, the, the hacker then posted a video scrolling through the whole conversation because that's a lot harder to fake than screenshots. It's like, look, this is genuine. Here's the whole thing. Patrick Smith went through and screen captured the frames to put together the entire conversation so you can look at his video and read the entire conversation. Nothing in there exonerates Ben as if there's something you could add to exonerate the screen captures that, that I posted and that Graham posted. Like, later, just kidding. Like, no. Doesn't exonerate him at all. Um, but it's so much the politician routine of saying, well, there's going to be evidence of somewhere else, so please, you know, keep your opinions. Just, just wait. Just wait until everybody forgets about this, and then we don't respond to it at all, and our whole thing of other evidence and exonerating was all bullshit. Hopefully by then you will have forgotten and we'll be on moving on to something else. That's what this is, is politician evasion and delay because um, these crooked power happy people know that if you make people think about other stuff for a while, they tend to forget about things. So if they think, well, I don't know the whole story, oh well, I'll reserve judgment until never because you'll never get anything that exonerates him because there isn't anything. But here's the best part, and here's one of the main <laughs> reasons I wanted to do this. But he, this is still Adam's email, but he, meaning Ben, is completing a review with a lawyer now, and Ben has still said nothing about the whole thing. He's completing a review with a lawyer now and is considering a defamation case against the original accuser, that's Graham Smith, and now has to consider one against Larkin. Do you see the irony here? The original allegation was that Graham Smith was publicly criticizing the Kokesh campaign, and in response, the Kokesh campaign was trying to hire somebody to screw with his life in a not at all voluntary sort of way, in a sort of way not at all in line with the non-aggression principle. So in light of that violation of the NAP, Graham Swift was saying, hey, look what they did to me. And I said, all right, I feel compelled to talk about this. Hey, look what they tried to do to him and probably tried to do to me. Ben's response is to threaten to use the violence of the state against people for pointing this out. How ironic can you get? The original allegation was, hey, you resort to violence when people are critical to you, of you. You can't say that or we're going to resort to violence against you for being critical of us. Unbelievable. But this shows the mentality of these people. So, okay, now, Adam's email goes on to point out something I actually got wrong in my video, which was the order in which two things happened. Um, a tweet from Luke Stokes to Adam and Patrick Smith talking to Adam. 
I, from, from the, the order I got them in and from the order I saw them, I thought they happened in the other order. And I was using uh, Luke Stokes' email to show that Adam already knew about it by the time he talked to Patrick Smith. Well, they happen in reverse order. And so Adam points this out, look at this, oh, this is so horrible, Larkin's lying or being horribly irresponsible, yada, yada, yada. Um, as soon as he said that, like the same, within 30 minutes, I checked it, I looked it up, I said, yeah, those did happen in the reverse order of, of what I thought they did. So I went to my video, now the first thing, you can go see this, the first thing in the video says, correction. At this point in the video, I, I talk about how these, and they actually happened in the other order, um, so I was wrong about that. And when you watch the video and it gets to that part, a thing appears, it says, correction, read what's in the description to point out that on that thing, the order of those two things, I got that wrong. Incidentally, that doesn't at all prove that Adam had never heard about this before talking to Patrick. It just means that the one thing I pointed to wasn't actually proof that he knew about it because I got the order of events wrong. But I immediately corrected that. Now on YouTube, you can't modify a video. You can't put in a part that says, never mind. You can't delete a part and say that was wrong or put in another part that says what just happened was actually wrong. You can only add text um, without taking the whole thing down and posting a new one. So, so I corrected that. Um, then Adam says this, quote, as a result, I have been advised to consider a defamation suit against Larkin. First of all, politician bullshit, cowardly wuss, I've been advised. This is him threatening state violence against me for pointing out what his campaign did while pretending, oh, somebody else is advising me. Bullshit. Grow a spine, Adam, and at least take responsibility for your own threats. Don't, like, make some anonymous, vague, imaginary person be the one threatening state violence against me for pointing out what your campaign tried to do to somebody. So it's also sort of hysterical that he's taking a page straight out of the Donald Trump handbook on this. For those who didn't see, uh, Saturday Night Live did a skit, wasn't actually that funny, but a skit making fun of, of Donald Trump. And Donald Trump tweets a thing about, this can't be legal. The court should review this. Basically, I want to use the violence of the courts to silence critics of mine. Gee, who would do that? Adam Kokesh would do that. He would consider a defamation suit against people for publicly being critical of his campaign being a bunch of psychotic terrorists, which is just awesome. Um, now, as for the defamation thing, I'm not worried in the slightest. Um, I don't know if Adam is that clueless or if he's bluffing, um, but that's not what defamation is. Um, he may be that clueless, given the fact that apparently he thinks executive orders can end the federal government. But either way, I'm not that worried. But whether he was bluffing while threatening state violence against me or actually intended to follow through doesn't really change the fact that he is not a voluntarist by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, continuing with Adam's email. If it turns out that Ben did something to violate or attempt to violate the NAP, I will publicly condemn him in no uncertain terms. Okay, sure. But I will wait for the rest of the evidence to pass judgment. In other words, I'll wait for a really long time and hope everybody forgets about this and never mention it again. So that's what he sent to Jeff. So notice his email, number one, admitted that the conversation that Graham Smith posted really happened. It was genuine. The conversation showing Ben Farmer trying to hire someone to ruin his life for being critical of the Kokesh campaign. Number two, he threatened state violence against me. Um, both, he pointed out that Ben was thinking of it and then Adam said it himself, oh, I might have to do a defamation suit. In other words, I might have to cry to the state to use violence against Larkin for making a video critical of me. Real libertarian mindset you got there. Um, and three, his email included the completely irrelevant press release. Because remember, this is all in response to Jeff saying, do you have a response to these allegations? Because this looks pretty bad. Well, here's my press release that doesn't mention anything about the allegations. Is that good enough? No, it's frickin' not. And, and he didn't mention the allegations in his email. He didn't, again, he didn't show any concern or remorse. He didn't like, well, I don't know, that's serious. I'll have to make sure that didn't happen. Adam Kokesh is a politician through and through. He cares about his own glory and his own power and his own money and nothing else. 
And one of the dead giveaways is when you see something like this where somebody directly connected to him, the main dude in his campaign back then, and by the way, he's still listed, Ben Farmer's still listed as a main contact on the Kokesh campaign's main website. If somebody that close to you is accused of doing something that slimy and evil, and you show no concern for the victim, but you make excuses, you deny it, you demonize the victim, lies and hysteria, when you know it frickin' happened, and in here, he admitted he knew it friggin' happened. That is the dead giveaway that he cares about himself and nobody else. Now, I want to point out that I sat on this stuff for two months. This was this this all happened October 22nd, 23rd. I sat on this to avoid drama. I sat on the fact that Adam I had proof that Adam admitted that the conversation in those screen captures was genuine. It really happened. Meanwhile, his underlings are on Steam and stuff saying, that looks fake. You could totally fake that. Uh, he knew it was real, and he was calling it lies and hysteria and letting other people in his campaign pretend it wasn't real. He knew it was real and wouldn't say so publicly. I had that information for two months, and I sat on it because I wanted to avoid drama. I also sat on the information showing that he threatened state violence against me for making a video about what his campaign did. And I sat on that for two months to avoid drama. And now I have to talk about it because I have access to this and most people don't in order to demonstrate the dishonesty of his most recent video where he's trying to paint himself as all virtuous and boycotting that horrible, scandalous Anarchapulco, like, nice joke. Now, this is also from October 23rd, same day. This is from Jeff, back to Adam, in response to that. Hi, Adam, the issue is the court of public opinion. This isn't so much a decision we need to make as it is the people who attend Anarchapulco. Again, I totally admit it was me who put them in that position. Kind of sucks, but I had to do it. So far, Jeff continues, from what I've seen, most people are quite negative on you over this, and I haven't seen you directly counter it publicly. Just posting your values is not explaining what happened. So Jeff didn't fall for the, well, here's an irrelevant press release. Is that good enough? But even if you do and you get a lot more people on your side than you currently do, we'll then have to make a decision between you and Larkin because of what Larkin has stated. As it currently stands, I think we'd have to choose Larkin as he is pretty universally beloved by the Anarchapulco audience. Whereas you haven't even endeared yourself to some of the Anarchapulco staff. It's actually a nice way of saying it, and I've talked to some of the people who had to deal with him and say, yeah, he's kind of a prima donna asshole. But anyway, um, so Jeff continues, unless something dramatic changes, I think we'll have to go with Larkin. We don't need to make a big noise over this, though. You haven't reached agreement with us to speak yet and aren't on the website, so we can just move on as though nothing has happened publicly. So that's Jeff saying, we don't need to be noisy. We don't have to like publicly condemn you or ban you or any of that. We just will quietly not invite you. Um, and then he ends with, if you can get your situation sorted out, we'd be happy to reassess. Now, if I have any complaint about Jeff, it's actually that he was too nice and too patient um, because I would have preferred, given how you know bad this is and that there was no real response for publicly saying, yeah, this isn't really okay with us because ostracizing and shunning and condemning is actually a very useful, important part of a voluntary society when people do slimy crap like this. Um, so if I have any complaint, it's just Jeff was being too nice to him. But the irony here is after being that nice and saying, let's just, it'll just be quiet and we won't, you know, make a big public deal of it or any public deal of it, Adam turns around and stabs him in the back. And then Adam pretends that the reason he wasn't invited is because he asked about the thousand dollars he was owed. That has nothing to do with it, and he knows that it had nothing to do with it. You just saw the email exchange back and forth that he saw, and then he pretends like, well, I might have to boycott Anarchapulco in principle because of these random list of little complaints or opinions from other people. And what a total joke! As if he would boycott it if he had a way, if, if he had some way to make money off of it. Nice freaking joke. He's pretending to distance himself from it to look like it was his choice. It wasn't his choice. It was mine. I invoked the power of disassociation. And it kind of, kind of put Anarch Polko in a sucky position, but they did what they did. 
And now Adam's pretending that he's, oh, all judgmental of them. But what's ironic here is, oh, but first of all, this is a total classic toxic narcissist routine of he'd be all friendly and cheerful and so cooperative and helpful as long as he thinks he can get something from you. But the moment he can't, he'll stab you in the back and slander you and demean you and attack you and try to destroy you. It's so freaking predictable. But what's so ironic and funny about this is that here, it, here Adam is quick to repeat just random secondhand gossip and complaints about Anarchapulco, about little things here and there um, that didn't even come from him and he didn't give any evidence of any of them. And, you know, for anybody to do that, Adam Kokesh, do you know how many people have stories about him mistreating them and doing creepy things and doing evil things and being power happy? And the number of things I've heard and I've sat on is like, you saw a couple things I just sat on for two months that I was gonna sit on forever to avoid drama. I know a bunch of people that Adam has mistreated. I've heard their stories firsthand. I know a lot of them, a lot of people have not at all nice stories of the way that Adam's treated them. And I'm still gonna sit on it to still avoid unnecessary drama because you don't need to know that and I don't need to argue about it and it doesn't freaking matter. Choose who to deal with, choose who you're gonna associate with. But I had to make this video to point out that Adam's trying once again to do the politician spin and pretend that he's being all righteous and mischaracterizing what's going on and trying to attack somebody else to take the attention away from himself so he fits right alongside Donald Trump. I'll find anybody to demonize and blame and point the finger at and ignore the fact that I'm the one who brought this on myself. So, I hope this issue will finally shut the hell up so that actual voluntarists can get back to doing what actually matters, which is spreading the actual principles of voluntarism and self-ownership and non-aggression not by means of political campaigns and hiring people to destroy other people who are critical of you, but by actually conveying and adhering to and living by example the principles of individual liberty.